Total War Warhammer 3 Patch 2.1 has arrived. Alongside balancing area of effect spells, the dwarves, the champions of Chaos' short-term goals, the regenerative abilities of Helm and Gorse and other bug fixes, we've got a new endgame scenario for Immortal Empires, bringing an ultimate challenge to the end of your campaign, and changes to domination mode, balancing matches out. Let's have a quick look. Starting with the magic rebalance, the stationary vortex spells like Pit of Shades, Talents of the Night and Infernal Gateway currently offer too little in terms of counterplays. As such, the wind-up duration for these spells is being increased and the overcast DPS is being reduced to allow players more leeway in dealing with these spells. One army who will benefit from this are the Dwarves. While they lack overall in high mobility units, the faction has had its spell resistance increased from 25% to 35% across all units. Runes have also been buffed, with the Rune of Hearth and Home restoring 5% vigor per second, and durations for both Rune of Speed and Master Rune of Speed being increased. As well as this, Hammerers have been improved, now dealing in magic attacks and having a few more hit points, increasing from 9200 to 10,000. On the subject of hit points, Helming Gorse has been getting quite a terrifying amount of mileage from his corpse cards, meaning we've had to rein in his HP as he has been nigh on par with a zombie dragon riding lord. As well as this, when playing as Helming Gorse in multiplayer, the cost of his corpse card addition has increased from 200 gold to 800. Lastly, in domination battles, we've reduced the capture weight of fast war beasts such as warhounds or squig herds and adjusted the rate of victory tickets achieved by capturing points, as well as the rate needed overall to win, to move towards a longer match duration. Now to the campaign map. When playing as the Empire, you'll receive reduced Imperial Authority penalties for the first destroyed and first raised Electro Capitals in the Immortal Empires. Festus can happen to work rather quickly, meaning that as a player it can be difficult to reach Hochland, one of his main targets, in time. While every count afterwards will be a bit more punishing, this will at least give you a bit more time to prepare for the coming onslaughts. On the subject of sieging, every legendary lord now starts with the trait Siege Attacker, meaning you can start a siege straight off against walled settlements even if you have no siege equipment. Regiments of renown costs have now been fixed, as many were asking for a lot more money than they're worth. An understandable hustle, but we're at war here. We received quite a lot of feedback for the Champions of Chaos, and there's quite a few changes in store. First off, the Warriors of Chaos now have the ability to subjugate all human and elven races, bringing more choices regarding domination to the table. Archeon and Bellacor can now also confederate other Warriors of Chaos factions when capturing their final settlements. You'll gain their vassals and their legendary lord, but everything else will be lost in the process. Victory conditions have also changed across all Chaos armies, with changes to the Long Victory for Scarbrand, Nakari, Kugath, Kairos and Demon Prince, and the Short Victory for Valkia, Village, Festus and Azazel, giving them more focused campaigns. Lastly, let's look at the end games. We've added a fix so that end game scenarios won't trigger if the player has managed to confederate all possible targets. We've also fixed an error that could prevent the big wall from happening if all the greenskins are dead or confederated. And to top it off, we've added a new end game scenario called the Ultimate Crisis. This scenario activates every end game scenario simultaneously bringing the whole world into absolute chaos. Good luck. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed the changes we brought in for patch 2.1 for Total War Warhammer 3. To see the full changelog, head over to TotalWar.com.